A few months back, I put together a very DIY, simple hard drive array uh, for this modest home studio that I've been working on for the last year plus. Um, and I had a lot of questions when I had posted a, a picture on Instagram. Uh, just people asking how I put it all together, what I'm using, and what its purpose is. And so I just thought I'd make a quick video showcasing that. I want to preface this video by saying that I'm not someone who knows a ton about computers, and so I'm just going to try and steer clear of the technical aspects. If you're someone who really knows what you're talking about, I'd love to hear any clarification you might have or tips you might have to improve the setup that I have down in the comments. I know a lot of people would probably be appreciative of that. So with that, I want to say that this whole thing is just very DIY, easy to do, anyone can do it, and best of all, it's really cheap. So let's get into it. As we move through this video, just bear with me. It might be hard to show uh, everything at the right angle holding this camera, and things might be a little bit messy. Uh, so the whole thing is rigged up to my new M1 Mac Studio that I had gotten about a month ago. It's been working really smoothly after I sorted out the kernel failure issue. Basically, I just had to reinstall the operating system. That's all. Um, the connections in the back here. So I've got the white Thunderbolt cable that'll eventually go to the studio display that's been on back order for months. Should be here later this week, but I just have a crappy TV I've been using in the meantime. Uh, then for my fast connections here, I have three hard drives attached in the Thunderbolt 4 ports. Uh, so one I've got here, this is where all my sample libraries are stored and all the extra sounds that I might need in my audio projects. That's a Samsung T5 drive. You don't need a super fast speed for that, but it helps. Um, and then my audio editing and video editing drives are the Samsung T7s, two terabyte. You can get 500 gig versions, one terabyte and two terabyte versions. If you're editing audio, you probably only need like 500 gig. I just got the two terabytes, so I didn't have to worry about it ever. Uh, for video, definitely get the biggest size that you can get. The T7s are super fast. Uh, and for the money, you really can't beat them. Uh, and then finally, what we're gonna spend most of the video on is uh, one of these other 3.0 USB connections, I can't remember which, is what's going to the hard drive array, which is stored underneath the desk. Uh, and I have cats, so I Velcro everything down and I try and keep the cables as neat as possible. You can see some stuff still falling apart up there. Um, yeah, so let's get into this. So I've got three USB hubs. One major thing you want to keep mind of is depending on your computer, there is a limited number of peripherals, of connections you can have. So although you might be attaching 50 different USBs, uh, internally in the computer, it's saying that there is a maximum. With the Mac Studio, I have not hit this. I haven't really counted. I think I might have, like there's 10 here for uh, six, seven, and an SD card slot somewhere in all of this as well. So, so I haven't maxed that out with the Mac Studio, but if you're trying to attach a lot of stuff simultaneously, uh, just know that maybe on a MacBook Pro or a, uh, a Mac Air, you might have that issue. Something else I should say is that there's a lot of USB hubs that are not compatible with M1 computers. Um, I had built this entire thing when I was still using an Intel-based MacBook Pro. Uh, and when I switched to the Mac Studio, I had to change out one of these hubs. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the USB hubs aren't displaying, like in the product page, if it's compatible with M1. So I can at least tell you that these three that I'm using do work fine. Everything I'm mentioning in this video, by the way, is going to be linked in the description. The cable management stuff, hard drives, USB hubs, etc. So if you're trying to build something like this, check those out. So this is the part that it might get a little bit difficult to, to see everything. I'm kind of under the desk here. Uh, all right, so I've got a few different USB hubs here. I've got the J5 Create. I've got the Atola. This is a 10 port with on-off switches. I'll talk about why I needed that in a second. Uh, and then an old StarTech 4 port that I had, and I had no reason to replace. Everything attached to this really doesn't need any um, fast transfer speeds. Like you can see, I've got my iLock in the back, which just hold licenses uh, for my plugins. I just need this to be read by the computer to know that I'm allowed to use the plugins that I bought. Um, I also have the CD reader attached there and then a few more USB hubs open if I needed them. So the J5 Create, like I said, uh, this is the fastest one. This is one that actually interfaces with my computer. Uh, and then I run the StarTech and the Atola hub off of that. I also have connections here for my USB keyboard. I have a M Audio KeyStation 49, which is a really nice size. Uh, and I've built these fold outs on either side so my keyboard just sits on top uh, and then I have the USB 
connection right there and also the sustain pedal it's just super easy to set up that's what i wanted um i really just don't want anything stopping me from creating when i feel inspired or if i want to work on something it's just got to be really quick to sit, get set up and get get the music flowing i also have a usb connection that runs here just permanently just kind of sits on the floor here this is for my hx stomps uh it is fast enough surprisingly to use the hx stomp as uh, an audio interface if you wanted to I will also sometimes interface this with the Morningstar MC8, which is my MIDI controller on this large pedal board. So it's playing fast still. Um, I don't monitor from the HX stomp. I do monitor my guitar tone, but playing back from the DAW, in that case, I usually just come out of the headphone port on the Mac Studio, and, and that seems to work fine. Uh, then lastly, I just have a lightning cable here, which mostly I use to charge the keyboards and... Uh, the touchpad, which are wireless. Uh, I can also use it to connect my phone if I need a, a fast transfer for videos and stuff off of that. Okay, so out of the Jake 5 Create, going into uh, what is going to be pretty much the main part of the video, this hard drive array, these stacks, and the passports back there. So I have a few different things here. Number one, I just want to explain that since I'm using very cheap hard drives, literally sometimes I'll be sitting at the desk and I hear one of the hard drives that's spinning down here comes screeching to a halt. These cheap hard drives, man, uh, they won't last forever, and so to preserve the life, I have these on-off switches. I really only use them for long-term storage, uh, and so if you're not using them, you should turn them off. The Samsung T5 and T7 drives I mentioned earlier are really great and, and pretty affordable. They're going to last a really long time. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the problem with using a solid-state drive for long-term storage is that you know, a spinning disk, if it goes bad, you can send it to someone if you really need to recover everything, uh, and they'll be able to get it off it. A solid state drive, you're pretty much out of luck. So I use the solid state drives because they're really fast for editing, uh, but when I'm finished with projects and it's moving to long-term storage, it goes to a spinning disk drive. All right, so the first connection is just for my time machine. That's the top hard drive. That just backs up everything that's stored on my computer. That's connected all day, every day. I've been using this drive for like five, six years, so it's probably getting close to, to being done, but uh, it's been working fine still. Uh, then each of these drives are doubled. So uh, it's like a little software DIY RAID system I've set up, and I'll show you how to do that in a second too. So I've got these two white connections here going to the white hard drives here that are red on the side. These are Seagate two terabyte drives. I they are a USB 3.0 connection, so relatively fast, and I use this for audio project storage. The way a RAID system works is that these two hard drives have exactly the same items, just duplicated across them. So when I connect it to the computer, it'll show up as a single hard drive, uh, and if I drag and, and drop a, a project I'm working onto it, it'll automatically copy to both of them. Then I have the next two here. This is for media backup. Uh, and that is connected to the WD 4 terabyte Passport, those tall drives, which I think are the ones that I hear screeching to a halt every now and then. 4 terabytes, uh, they work fine. They were surprisingly cheap for as much use as I get out of them. Definitely, I want to keep those disconnected when I'm not using them. And then finally, I had two old hard drives. These are really old, uh, and they're pretty slow. I use those for Photos, the Photos app, and... Um, my iTunes library. So that's they're not really relevant to this video, but I thought I'd mention that. They're also on a RAID system. So let's say you want to set up uh, a RAID system uh, with a few hard drives that you have. You want to find the disk utility. You're going to see all the hard drives connected here on the side. You can see I actually have under external audio edit, the sound library, which is my samples, and then the final cut library for video. Then I have under here RAID sets, media backup, Okay, so to set up a RAID system, we'll go to File, RAID Assistant, it's really easy. Uh, there's two different types, actually there's a lot of different types of RAID systems. Striped, I think, is irrelevant to audio because we have these really fast connections um, with solid state drives and Thunderbolt 3 and 4 now. Uh, but basically what Striped is saying is that you have one project maybe and you want to use it across two hard drives so you can access it faster than you would be able to with a single connection. That doesn't make sense because, yeah, the, the really cheap solid-state drives are just so fast these days. 
Uh, if we want to set up one for backup, that's going to be mirrored RAID 1. And what it says is an exact copy of a set of data on two or more disks. This type is useful when read performance or reliability is more important. So a set of data across two or more disks. I use just two hard drives. I think that's enough. Uh, if I have one go bad, uh, then what I'll do is just order another one, uh, get it here pretty quickly, and continue backing up from that. If for some reason both went down, I could always just send my hard disk to someone, pay a bunch of money, and recover it that way. So you'll select that mirrored, uh, and you're going to see here media backup. That's my video storage. Six terabytes, actually. I forgot it was six. I thought it was four for a second. Uh, and then you can see the two hard drives, WD Elements, which is uh, the hard drives that I'm using, the tall stacks that you saw earlier. Uh, you'll just continue through here. You want to use the uh, the type OS extended, journaled. Uh, that's what you want if you're on a Mac computer. I apologize, this tutorial is for, for Macs, but you can set this up very easily on Windows as well. Just follow the prompts. It's very easy to set up. I don't want to erase my information, so I'm going to stop there, uh, and hopefully that was helpful. So that's my hard drive setup. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Like I said, everything's coming through a single USB 3.0 port on my Mac Studio. Uh, and so the transfer speeds really aren't that quick. It's not something where you could work off of video or audio editing from a hard drive. You still want to have a direct connection through something faster like Thunderbolt uh, for that. But for long-term storage, which is what I use it for, it's more than capable. For an example, like a 10 gigabyte video, which is what most of my videos end up being here that I upload, uh, when I move that to a hard drive to store it, it ends up taking around like two minutes. It's still pretty quick, but not quick enough to edit audio off of, for instance. As mentioned earlier, everything uh, that you saw in this video is linked in the description. If this video was helpful and you want to try building your own hard drive away, uh, purchasing through those links uh, just earns me a very small commission that goes towards helping uh, fund what I do on this channel. Thanks for watching. Take care. Like the video. Subscribe. All that stuff. There's going to be a lot of recording videos to come uh, and possibly a new playlist just for this kind of thing. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.